about the right of self-determination on behalf of the Falkland Islanders. I cannot believe that a Prime Minister of Britain, like Mr. Cameron, has been able to get away with such a lie, a, a lie of logic. You keep hearing people, they don't want to let go of this. They, you keep hearing people say, the Islanders' wishes are paramount. The Islanders' wishes are paramount. Only, only, or, or the only thing that matters are the Islanders' wishes. The Islanders' wishes are paramount. No, they are not. They are not paramount. They are not the only thing that matters. I can't believe that this man had the whole world hypnotized with this notion of we, we don't know what to say anymore because it's all about whatever the Islanders want. It's all about them and everything else just went out the window. It is not true. That is not proper reasoning. That is not the correct logic. If Mexico all of a sudden started telling people in California, you know, we want California back. You guys, you guys should be Mexican. You're not, you, uh, or, you know, you, you can leave California if you like, but that was our land. Californians would start, what would they do? They wouldn't start defending themselves against uh, the Mexican government making this claim. They would turn to the federal government and they would say, you guys made this mess. You guys get us out of it. Deal with Mexico. We're in the situation we are because of you. That is the proper, proper logic. Now, see, the thing that, that bothers me about this is not so much that it's spreading dumbness, because before error, people become quiet. When something, if you notice, when somebody teaches the wrong thing in class or in a group of people, have you noticed that everybody becomes kind of silent and they intuitively feel that it's, something's not right about that? It, it spurs, it proliferates dumbness when you uh, proliferate misinformation or lies. It's not so much that. What bugs me is that this notion of a country having um, extra national territories, overseas territories, associated states, is potentially a cheating tool because what happens? Britain says it's up to the islanders, right? In the meantime, Britain ha doesn't have to answer to uh, why this conflict exists because they're waiting on the islanders who happen to not actually be the ones that created the conflict and are not accountable for what happened on the islands. Yet everybody's waiting on their decision. So it's like a transference of a power not earned. And it holds the whole world. You can't have, you know, there's one people, one people represented by one country. You can't have uh, the importance of one country in the world represented by several versions of that country. You can't say, well, I'm a country, but wait, this other England also has to speak, and this other England also has to speak. In the meantime, the whole world's okay, are you done already? Uh, you know, we're going to hear Belize now, and well, yes, we're waiting for Australia too. You know, we're waiting for Canada to say what they want, and no, 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 we're not in a rush, we're not in a rush. Let's wait for uh, the Falklands to decide for England, because that's what it is. Each one of these satellite uh, authority entities, which would be the, the um, masked under the idea of uh, self, the right of self-determination, uh, has an, an authoritative voice equal to the parent country. Well, every other country in the world, ha you know, has to respond answers onto the next one. Mexico speaks, Guatemala speaks, Russia speaks, China speaks, everybody speaks. China's not asking, wait, let's see what Tibet says. Hang on, we've got to consult the, the uh, Formosa. We've got to consult um, whatever it's called, the, the Democratic Republic of China. I don't know. No, it's only England that is saying, okay, wait, no, they are also Little England, so ask them, 
Meanwhile, the problem is about England, not about the Falklanders. It's about what England did with Argentina in 1833. But we all have to decide of a people that do not have their own nation. They did not create the conflict. They're sovereign to the British government. They're, so the whole notion of extraterritorial, um, extra territory, extra national territories, uh, I'm not going to be kind and say that it's tricky to, to uh, they could fix it. They, they would adjust it to basically everybody be under London and then there would be no more of this three cup uh, moving around thing. No, it's it's the Falklands. No, it was me. It was London. No, it was. Uh, let's let's see if it's under the Montreal Cup. You know. <laughs> oh, let's see if it's hiding in Canberra. You know that game would be over, and we would all respond to to one capital, as every other nation and every other people in the world are. So that's why the the notion of extranational territories. Uh, it's not exactly fair on the other countries and the other people, the other peoples of the world, and a world that has to work together in the form of equal nations uh, at the United Nations as a, as a form of, of, of equal nations where a people are represented by one country. It turns out that one country has several little countries that have to speak uh, for it, and so we all have to adjust to this other this other type of of uh, of country with uh, several parts to it, and everybody else uh, occupies only the space of one country and one people. I don't think that's fair. I don't think it's fair that uh, w we have the whole world has to adjust to this complicated system that uh, the British want to uh, not. Um, <laughs> not yield in any in any ways. I think I made my point. And this is this is what I mean by by the unfairness of uh, extra national territories, in case anybody was asking in the groups.